So I've taken a look at these BMS boards in a couple of videos I've done recently. So what I'll do in this video, a nice short comparison between charging up three 18650 batteries through the BMS or the power, uh, power protection board and three batteries charged up through a proper 18650 battery charger and then run them through the BMS into an LED light panel and see which one lasts the best. Okay, first things first, I've taken the six 18650 batteries that I've actually got, mixed them together to make sure that there's no bias one way or another, separated them into two sets of three. And what I've done here, as you can see, is a charge up. Now I've got three of the 18650s in the Nightcore 18650 battery charger, and I've got three of the 18650s sitting in a normal uh, battery holder with the BMS doing the charging. Now I'm using a bench power supply to provide the charge through the BMS into these 18650s and this is a raw dump of power. So as we've discussed in previous videos, the little BMS board or the battery protection board more to the point, uh, doesn't contain a proper charging circuit for the 18650 batteries. It's not a proper lithium charging circuit. So it's just dumping raw power. So what I've done is I've set the bench power supply to 12.8 volts, just a little bit of an overhead so that each volt can reach 4.2, each battery can reach 4.2 volts. And I've set the current uh, at a three amp maximum and it won't draw that much. So as you can see, as things are charging up, the 18650s are receiving close to their 4.2 volts each through the BMS, it's, it's gradually rising and they're drawing around about 1.2, 1.3 amps, and that's going to each of the cells. So they're being charged at a roughly 4.2 volts and roughly 1.2 amps as an average uh, per cell. The 18650 battery charger, the Nightcore one, that's charging them properly and it's only giving them 375 milliamps each. Um, so the Nightcore one obviously does charge the batteries properly. Uh, so those two will be left to run I'll wait till the current drops down on the bench power supply significantly and then I'll consider those 18650s reasonably charged. The reason I say that is because there is no termination timer or anything else running on this little BMS board. So I'm just watching the current as it drops down and then we'll see once it's down to around about 0.15 of an amp, I think that will be enough to consider those batteries full and I'll turn that off. So as I mentioned, I'll take the first batch of charged up batteries, in this case it's the one charged through the BMS, hooking it up to the LED light panel and see how long it actually runs. And hopefully, or luckily, we can speed this up. And as you can see, that ran for 35 minutes, 35 minutes continuous runtime before the BMS kicked in at low voltage and turned the power supply to the panel off. So what about the batteries that have been charged in the proper 18650 battery charger? Let's run them through now. And again, sped up for your convenience. And as you can see, the runtime on that was 25 minutes. Not 35 minutes as what we got through the BMS charging, 25 minutes through proper lithium battery charging. So what does this actually mean? Well, what it means is we've overcharged and artificially inflated the capacity of the 18650s that were sitting inside the BMS. They were receiving about an amp to an amp and a quarter charge each on average before it dropped down to virtually nothing. And they did peak out at around about 4.2 volts before they did drop a little bit to around about 4.1. Now that's fine to get the maximum amount of power into a battery just using the BMS, not proper charging methodology. They did get a little warm, but nothing over safety limits, it was around 40 Celsius, uh, and the board itself never got hot and doesn't have thermal capacity in those ones either, so they can't measure the temperature of the battery pack, but beside the point, um, that worked. You got 35 minute runtime being charged through that little BMS board, and you got 25 minute runtime through batteries being properly charged. There is a risk 
that you're overcharging and you're stressing and you're possibly not taking every safety precaution possible by charging them rough and raw using that lab power supply or a 12 volt external brick, dumping it through the BMS and the BMS just sending 4.2 volts or roughly 4.2 volts to each of those cells at an un unlimited amount of current based on, based on what the board can handle, the batteries want to consume and so on. The proper charging methodology was fairly different and is designed to be within all safety considerations and limits and to make those batteries last as long as they possibly can by slamming that current and just dumping power into those batteries through the BMS you might get a charge and obviously 35 minute runtime versus 25 minute runtime is you know that's significant so we definitely didn't miss out on runtime but what we are doing is we're not considering every safety precaution and we are not getting the best possible life out of our batteries. Now I could repeat this test two or three times and just do variations and comparisons but based on the amount of power I saw being dumped through the BMS into the batteries and the nice safe and conservative charge applied by the battery charger, this one here, um, I'm fairly confident that yes you can jam a heap of power into a battery and get a longer runtime, 35 minutes, but if you wanted to maintain your batteries, keep everything safe and do it properly, you'd be wanting to use one of those and not the raw dumping method that is the case when you use that kind of BMS. So thanks very much for watching. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That always helps. Hit that subscribe button and I hope you'll join me again in about a week's time.